Have you ever thought about why electronics have a third prong on the plug? Or have you heard engineers talk about grounding a machine instead of earthing it? It's easy to get confused because these words sound alike and are often used to refer to the same thing. But knowing the small but important changes is important for electrical safety and system operation. Welcome. In this video, we'll delve deeply into the topic of electrical earthing and grounding. We'll explain the term's meanings, importance, differences, especially by location, and how they work together to protect you and your equipment. By the end of this video, you'll clearly understand. What is earthing? What is grounding? Key differences and overlap. Why are they important? How protective devices relate? First, let's talk about earthing. At its core, earthing is primarily about safety, specifically, protecting people from electric shock if there's a fault. Imagine this scenario. Inside this washing machine, insulation fails and a live wire touches the metal casing. Without earthing, that entire metal body becomes live. If you touch it while also being in contact with the ground, like standing on a damp floor, your body provides a path for the current to flow to the earth. That's a dangerous electric shock. So what does earthing do? Earthing connects the non-current carrying conductive parts of equipment, like the metal casing of our washing machine, motor bodies, or electrical cabinets, directly to the earth, the soil, via a dedicated conductor and an earth electrode. This earth electrode system is designed to have a very low resistance path to the general mass of the earth. When that fault occurs, the large fault current prefers this easy path through the earth wire to the ground rather than through a person. The main purpose here is to ensure that if a fault makes the casing live, the casing's potential stays as close to earth potential, zero volts, as possible, minimizing the touch voltage and the risk of shock. It also provides a path for enough fault current to flow to potentially trip a protective device, like a fuse or circuit breaker, although that's more reliably achieved through grounding systems we'll discuss next. In some systems, like TT systems common in parts of Europe, earthing works primarily with residual current devices, RCDs, or ground fault circuit interrupters, GFCIs. Key takeaway for earthing. It's about connecting equipment casings and exposed metal parts directly to the physical earth for shock protection. Now let's talk about grounding. While safety is a component, grounding often has a broader meaning especially in North American terminology like the National Electrical Code, NEC. Grounding involves connecting parts of the electrical system itself to a reference point, and very often, that reference point is the earth, which is why the terms get confused. Grounding serves two primary purposes. Number one, system grounding. This involves intentionally connecting one of the current carrying conductors of the electrical system usually the neutral conductor, to the ground, earth, at the source, like the utility transformer, and or at the main service entrance of a building. Why do this? It stabilizes the voltage of the system conductors relative to ground. It provides a fixed reference point, nominally zero volts. Without this reference, voltages could float to dangerously high levels due to insulation issues, lightning, or static discharge. Number two, equipment grounding. This is closer to the concept of earthing, but with a crucial difference in focus, especially in NEC-style systems. It involves connecting the non-current carrying metal parts of equipment, like that washing machine casing again, via an equipment grounding conductor, EGC, that green or bare copper wire in cables and conduits. Here's the critical part. This EGC is bonded, connected, to the system's grounded conductor, the neutral, at the main service panel. Remember how the neutral is connected to ground there? This creates a complete, low-impedance circuit for fault current. Unlike pure earthing, which just dumps current into the earth, this equipment grounding system provides a direct, low-resistance path back to the source. This causes a very high current to flow immediately, essentially a short circuit. This high current is designed to rapidly trip the overcurrent protective device, 
circuit breaker or fuse for that circuit, de-energizing it and removing the danger. So, while grounding uses the earth connection for reference and stability, the equipment grounding part is primarily focused on creating that effective fault current return path to ensure breakers trip quickly. Key takeaways for grounding involves connecting the system, often neutral, to ground for voltage stability and reference, and connecting equipment casings via an EGC back to the grounded point to provide a fast fault clearing path. Now, let's clarify the confusion. We've seen that both involve safety and often involve a connection to the earth. The main difference often lies in terminology and primary emphasis, largely influenced by different standards like the IEC, International Electrotechnical Commission, used widely outside North America, and the NEC, National Electrical Code, used primarily in the US and Canada. Under IEC standards, earthing strongly emphasizes that direct connection to the earth for safety. Protection might rely heavily on the earth connection itself or sensitive devices like RCDs detecting leakage to earth. Under NEC standards, grounding is a broader term. System grounding establishes the reference. Equipment grounding provides the vital low impedance path back to the source to trip the breaker. While it uses an earth connection, the focus for fault clearing is that return path, not just dumping current into the soil. So, is the third pin on your plug for earthing or grounding? In North America, you'd call it the ground pin and it connects to the equipment grounding conductor. In many other parts of the world, you'd call it the earth pin connecting to the earthing system. Both serve a similar safety function, providing a path for fault current away from you. But how they achieve protection within the overall system differs subtly in emphasis and design, e.g., reliance on EGC path versus earth path plus RCD. Why do we spend so much time on this? Because failures in earthing and grounding systems can have catastrophic consequences. One, prevents electric shock. As we've seen, this is the primary safety benefit. A properly earthed or grounded appliance significantly reduces the risk of fatal shock if internal wiring fails. 2. Protects equipment. Voltage surges, lightning strikes, and even internal faults can damage sensitive electronics. Grounding helps stabilize voltages and provides a path for surge currents to dissipate, protecting expensive equipment. 3. Prevents fires, fault currents, if not cleared quickly, can generate immense heat, melting insulation and igniting nearby combustible materials. The fast tripping action enabled by effective equipment grounding is crucial for fire prevention. 4. Ensures proper operation of protective devices, circuit breakers, fuses, RCDs, residual current devices, and GFCIs. Ground fault circuit interrupters rely on well-designed earthing and grounding systems to function correctly. An RCD or GFCI detects small imbalances between live and neutral currents, like current leaking to earth, and trips very quickly. Standard breakers or fuses need the high current provided by the low impedance grounding path to trip during a major fault. Whether you're wiring a house, working in an industrial plant, or designing electronics. Understanding and correctly implementing these systems according to your local codes and standards is non-negotiable. So, let's quickly recap the key takeaways. Earthing, often IEC focus, is primarily about connecting non-current carrying metal parts directly to the earth for shock protection, ensuring these parts stay close to zero volts during a fault. Otherwise, grounding, often NEC focus, is broader. It includes system grounding, connecting the neutral slash source to earth for voltage stability, and equipment grounding, connecting metal parts via an EGC back to the grounded point at the source to provide a fast fault clearing path. While both aim for safety and often use the earth, the mechanism and emphasis can differ. Grounding, particularly equipment grounding in NEC systems, 
emphasizes the low impedance path back to the source to rapidly trip over current devices. Regardless of the terminology used in your region, the fundamental principles of providing voltage reference, ensuring safety from shock, and enabling rapid fault clearing are universal and critical. Understanding the difference between earthing and grounding is fundamental to working safely with electricity. Always consult your local electrical codes and qualified professionals when dealing with electrical installations. I hope this video helped clarify the concepts of earthing and grounding. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.